Hiya, I'm Sam and it gives me great pleasure to welcome you back to this beginning Git video series. In this episode, I'm going to take a look at exactly what is this staging area that you may or may not have heard of. And what does Git add actually do? Git has three overarching conceptual areas, the first of which is the working directory. You can think of this as what's currently checked out, what's in the directory that I'm working in. As you navigate through the different commits in the repository, checking each of them out, the contents of the working directory updates to represent that commit. You do your work in the working directory, you add it, and then you commit it. What does this add bit mean? Well, going from the working directory, there's the concept of the staging area. You can think of the staging area as building your next commit. When I type git commit, what exactly will go in as the contents of that commit? You stage that commit in the staging area using git add. And then when you go ahead and actually commit it, then it gets saved into the repository, may also be known as the index. You've then created a commit, a point in history, that you can then reference and access later on. And in fact, if you go and check out one of the commits inside the index, inside the repository, what that does is it updates the working directory to match that commit. The staging area is actually incredibly useful. It allows you to do things like staging just a few lines of a file. I might have changed 80 lines in a file, but I actually want to do a commit that only has 10 of them in. Because of the staging area, you can do exactly that. I'm going to demonstrate that with our to-dos repository that we've been working on all the way through this series. I'm going to make two changes to a file that actually I want to split up into two commits. And then we'll have a look at how you can use git add to put them into the staging area separately before then committing them. This demo once again reuses the RW to-dos repo that you cloned way back in video 2. Use vim to edit the book ideas file inside the books directory. Scroll down to the CVS by tutorials and check that off. In Vim, if you type Rx, that will replace that space with an X. Then scroll down to the bottom of the file and press O to create a new line. And in there, create a new book idea called 50 Shades of Green. Save and quit by pressing escape, colon, WQ. Type git status and you'll see that it recognises that you modified the book ideas file. And git diff shows you those two line changes that you made. Type git add dot to add that change to the staging area. And git status now shows that you've staged the modifications in the book ideas file. Type git diff and you'll see it's blank because there's no difference between the working directory and the staging area. However, if you want to see the difference between the staging area and the index, i.e. the repo, the most recent commit, type git diff dash dash staged. To unstage that change that already exists in the staging area, type git reset head book slash book ideas dot md. This means if you check status, you're back to the stage where you've got the modified file, but it's not staged ready for commit. You're now going to use interactive adding, git add dash i. This launches you into a session that allows you to curate which things you want to stage. At the top you see a list of all of the files that are currently being modified and whether or not they've been staged. So here you see that book ideas has nothing staged and unstaged two additions and one deletion. Below that you see a menu of the commands that you can use. The highlighted first character shows you how you can action each of the options. Typing S will show you the status, which is what you can currently see. The update menu allows you to stage files. It shows you a list of all of the possible files and you can select each one of them. Here select books by typing B, following it with enter to return to the main menu. You can then show the status again, seeing that you've now staged the entire books file and that there's nothing left to stage. To then go ahead and unstage it, you can use the revert option. Same kind of format, type R to revert, then choose the books file with B 
and then S status will show you that now you've unstaged those changes. The patch command allows you to select subsections of each of the files. Type P and then it once again shows you a list of files and choose B for the book ideas file. Pressing enter will leave the patch menu and it will then take you through patching each of the changes. This command will split the files that you've selected into hunks. It presents you with your first hunk and asks you what you want to do with it. Typing question mark expands the list of all of the options available. This hunk contains both of the changes and you actually want to split this so that you can commit each of the lines separately. Type S for it to split the hunk. It will then present you with the first newly created split hunk. This represents the changing of the CVS by tutorials from incomplete to completed. Type Y for yes to stage this hunk. It will then move on to the next hunk which is the addition of the 50 shades of green book which we don't want to stage so type N. This takes you back to the main menu. If you type S you can now see that the status has one addition and one deletion staged and one addition unstaged. Type D to see the diff of the file that you've staged. This once again presents you with a list of files to choose and type B to select the book ideas file. You can see here that the staged diff is exactly what you want it to be. Then type Q to leave the interactive add tool. As expected, git status shows that you've got both staged and unstaged changes for this book ideas file. Git diff shows you the difference for the unstaged changes and git diff dash dash staged shows you the diff for the staged changes. You can then commit in the standard way with git commit dash m completed the CVS book, once again using the dash m argument to provide the commit message at the command line. Git status now shows you those changes which you didn't stage and obviously the stage ones have now been committed. Git log dash p confirms that the previous commit only contained the completion of the CVS by tutorials book. As a shortcut to the patch add functionality you can use git add dash p. Here once again it splits up your files into hunks and you can choose each in turn whether or not you want to stage them. There is currently only one hunk available so select Y to stage it. Then use git commit dash M to commit that change. Once again providing the commit message on the command line. And then use git log to see those two new commits that you've just created. Git log dash p will show you the diff, demonstrating you created one commit that checked off the CVS by tutorials book and another commit that added the 50 shades of green book. Okay, so now you've got a really good understanding of git add and the staging area. To round off your knowledge in this area, you're going to do a challenge that involves you learning how to delete and move files in git. If you take a look in the articles directory, you'll see that there's an iOS articles ideas file. Now that really should live in the tutorials directory. So move that please and make sure that's saved as a git commit. And after that you'll see that we start to put some ideas together for an ill-advised live streaming platform. I don't want those ideas anymore so go ahead and delete that file. Again saving it as a commit in git. You might have to do a little bit of research on the internet or if you can't be bothered don't pause me and I'll do it with you in a second. Taking the move first, assuming you didn't know anything about git, then to move a file you use the mv command and I want to move articles slash ios article ideas to tutorials. Then when I do git status you can see that it thinks I deleted a file and created a new one which is not currently tracked. That's because git doesn't really understand anything about moving. However, if I do git add dot 
and git status, you'll see that it now has managed to guess that what happened there was I renamed a file. By renamed, it means that the path of that file has changed. It doesn't understand moves because all it knows about files are their paths. Git has a shortcut to deal with this, so you can reset back to where we started. To do this, you have to do three things. First, you need to unstage these changes with git reset head dot. Then you need to undo the deletion of the file that existed in the source of the move with git checkout dash dash dot. That resets the working directory back to the state of the index. And then finally, you need to delete the file that is the result of the move itself, because this to git now just looks like an untracked file with rm tutorials slash iOS article ideas. Git status then shows that we're back exactly where we started. The shortcut is git mv. So use it like you use the mv command, so articles slash ios article ideas tutorials. Now you can see git status has immediately staged that change. It's moved the file and staged the rename. You commit this change in the usual way with git commit dash m providing the commit message. Moving on to deletion. In the same way that Git has a shortcut to move a file, it also has a shortcut to delete a file, git rm. Type git rm videos slash live streaming ideas and then check the status and you'll see that it has staged that deletion. Then you can use git commit dash m providing the commit message to commit that change. Git status shows that you've now got a clean working directory and git log dash p shows the diff of you deleting that file. And with that, you've got a good grounding of what the staging area is and some of the more advanced topics of using git add. I would be willing to bet there's a lot of professional software engineers out there working for some of the biggest companies that do not know about interactive adding in git. Nice work. I'll catch you again on the next video when we take a look at how you can ignore files in Git. Why would you want to and how to do it? Till then, bye bye.